Good day, Bermuda, and thank you once again for showing up uh, today to our press conference and our release as the One Bermuda Alliance continues to roll out its candidates in preparation for the next election. To my left and to your right as you view, uh, we have a young man who I have come to know very well uh, and who is passionate about the direction that he wishes the country to be going in. It is important, Bermuda, that you understand that the One Bermuda Alliance is here and continues to work on your behalf to win and to have your trust in knowing that we are concerned about where we are as a country, as a people, and the direction that we're heading in. And it gives me great joy today to announce that John Bronson will be rolled out in constituency Southampton East, number 29. I've gotten to know John and he's been involved, he's not new to the political arena. I've gotten to know him as a man who was deeply concerned about the youth and young people, who's deeply concerned about the economy and the direction that we are going as a country, and who has said on many occasions that he uh, appreciates the fact that the One Bermuda Alliance is about fiscal prudence and accountability and transparency. And so today, with great excitement and joy, on behalf of the One Bermuda Alliance, I announce and present to you John Bronson, uh, Southampton East, constituency number 29. I'm glad to see you and have you involved, my brother. Go Thank ahead. You. <coughs> I'm sure many of you are wondering why I have decided to return to politics. The best way I can explain why is to explain to you what I believe in. As a single father, who has actively participated in raising two fantastic young adults, I believe that a strong family structure, however it may be defined in the modern day, is essential to our success. For a family to succeed, it needs certain essential components to survive. Today, the family unit is wounded. The family unit is struggling to make it to the next day, to put a roof over their head, to put food on the table, to feed their children. The truth is, times are hard, and they're getting harder and harder every day. I believe that it's government's responsibility to look after the island's financial health and well-being, which means creating an environment that attracts new and sustainable business, provides opportunity to compete equitably and fairly for well-paying jobs, career, and business opportunities. And also to ensure that there is hope for a promising future through good, effective, caring leadership. I ask you, are we better off today than we were five years ago? Have the policies and decisions made by the government improved our conditions and moved us in the right direction? Has there been a reasonable explanation by the government as to how things are going to get better? We can no longer afford to stick our heads in the sand. Things have to change in order for them to improve. I believe that we should respect our elders. We do this by ensuring that their needs are provided for, their voice is heard, and we value their contribution. I believe in the value of hard work and instilling that value in our young people. I also believe that it's government's responsibility to ensure that our young people have the tools to be successful and competitive in the global market through providing the opportunity of an excellent diverse education so that no one is left behind. This means reviving technical education and apprenticeships and certification to complement our academic curriculum. I believe that positive opportunity through sport and the arts, a good job, and a fair and equitable workplace helps to make the decision to join a gang far less attractive. But we must 
not neglect public safety. And we need to do this by ensuring that our law enforcement have the necessary tools to do their job effectively. I return to politics because the things that I believe in, and I'm sure you share in my beliefs, have been neglected. The government's verbalized intent has not been matched by their action. Has everything they've done been bad? The answer is no. But I would say, if we honestly, honestly, had to give them a grade for their performance over the last five years, it would have to be unsatisfactory. The government has created this situation, and they are not the government to lift us out of it. It is time for change, and our challenge, our challenge is to ha be brave enough to stand up and say, no more, no more. In the words of Barack Obama, the people, if the people cannot trust their government to do their job, to protect them and promote common welfare, all else is lost. I believe that the OBA is well positioned to tackle these challenges with a diverse team that it has developed. I will work hard and to the best of my ability, and I look forward to the opportunity to represent the residents of Southampton East and Constituency 29. Vote for change. Vote for the One Bermuda Alliance. Vote for change. Vote for the OBA. Thank you. I'm going to put your mic back on there. <laughs> questions? Yeah. Yes, questions. Go ahead. Um, Sir, <clears throat> Mr. Bronson, when you first served in Parliament, it was with the UDP. Yes. And uh, I think pressure of business, uh, among other things, uh, drove you from the House. What has happened that changed in your life and obviously in your beliefs to have brought you back in when your life is still pretty hectic? Um, the question was, um, what, uh, when I left politics, it was for personal and business reasons. And uh, what has changed uh, at this stage? What has changed is my kids are now adults. And they are in university. And their reliance on me is less than they were when they were teenagers. What has changed is I have developed uh, the business opportunities that I set. And I have to say, um, leaving politics uh, for the opportunity to provide educational opportunities for young black males and females was far a greater calling at the time. And I feel that by doing that, it only helped to move uh, Bermuda forward in ensuring that our young people are able to receive a quality education not because, um, not for reasons of financial need that would prevent them. And I have to say, as I said in my remarks, um, my return to politics is really about what I believe, and I'm sure that Bermuda and the people of Southampton would also agree. And sometimes you have to do what's right um, to and do the right thing, and I believe that this is doing the right thing to really be an agent for change, and I have the desire to be that agent if elected. Now, in the poll in the Gazette today, um, certain figures are coming out that uh, are very, very encouraging for the, mm -hmm. the OBA. Um, one of the bad figures that <coughs> seem to affect both parties is the young people seem to be disillusioned. Um, have you found that out, and what do you plan to do about it? I mean, as a, as a father of two young adults, um, I, I really get the disappointment. Um, we're in a scenario where we've read the statistic. You know, 36% of the youth population are unemployed. Is that right? And I think one of the challenges is understanding why we're in this situation. And as I said, we as leaders of Bermuda have to create an opportunity where we can attract business to Bermuda. Our reality is Bermuda is a service industry. 
And as long as we have the business to service, the economy will thrive, whatever form that will take. And that means not just for young Bermudians, but for all Bermudians. And that is, I believe, the agenda of the OBA. When did you actually um, decide to become a candidate? I have to tell you, to, to, to the question was, when did I decide to become a candidate? Um, I had made the decision to work with the OBA some time ago. But um, as I alluded to, there were personal challenges, be it personal and professional, that really made the decision to run uh, a little bit difficult. But as things changed, um, it beca became quite clear that this is something that um, is, this is an opportunity that I was able to um, to work through. I made the decision and I announced it to the party <coughs> two days ago mm -hmm. that I would run. And I was a bit nervous about it, to be quite honest. But once I told Craig, I actually was excited because I liked the idea of a challenge. And um, I think to win the election is going to be a challenge. And that's one of the things that I appreciate about the OBA is that they welcome that challenge because they realize and we realize that in order for Bermuda to advance and to stop the hemorrhaging, it's going to require change. And if you look at the OBA, it is a vehicle that represents change and a collective Bermuda. Uh, how does the OBA differ from the United Bermuda Party? The OBA differs from the United Bermuda Party in that it has had the ability to attract diversity. What I mean by that is we have members of the BBA, we have members of the UBP, we have members of the PLP, and I think it's fair to say that this is first time in the history of any political party where three parties, three demographics of people and ideologies have come together to consolidate a platform that we can all agree, agree on, buy into, mm -hmm. and share a common vision. And I think that also is a strength that the OBA brings to the table. Because like any structure, if you have core values that everyone can buy into and govern their behavior by, it only strengthens the fiber of what it is able to do. And Bermuda needs a government that is strong with good leadership. Mr. Cannon. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Brunson just <coughs> said he mm -hmm. agreed to this candidacy two days ago. So, mm -hmm. um, you've been telling us for months now that you had all your candidates in place. Yes. But they weren't all in place. Yes, they were all in place. You have to understand that this is a process, Io. Um, he mentioned earlier that uh, in his statement that um, he joined the party a long time ago. Uh, he had already put in his application to be a candidate a long time ago. Uh, that final decision for him was a couple of days ago, uh, but we had already made our decision on the direction that we wished to go. Uh, so I'm excited that uh, it now has come to culmination and fruition. Mr. Brunson, when you left the arena, P uh, UBP was falling apart. Did you ever consider joining PLP and why not? Um, basically, um, when I look at uh, my political ideology, um, I make my decision um, that is a value-based decision. And to me, I try and align myself with that organization which best represents my values and what I believe in. I stated that in the outset. I believe that the OBA best, their core values, best align, align with what I believe. And to me, it was far more a compelling uh, decision to, to make with someone that is um, and aligns themselves with what I believe are my core values. Um, and to their credit, um, they asked me. And um, I appreciated that. I felt valued. You speak of change. What specific change are you going to bring to the arena? 
Well, as I said, um, you know, I have uh, a particular passion to um, the youth and sport. And I believe that there's certain things that those um, uh, areas can uh, improve to better the opportunities for our young people. For example, I mean, I'll use my daughter a as a prime example. My daughter was um, able to enjoy her collegiate career because of her success in track. And I think the experience that my daughter had is an experience that many Bermudians can have if we really place the focus on aligning um, what our young people can achieve, whether you're athletic, academic, or you're in the arts. And um, it can create real opportunity. And, and I do think that, you know, given uh, the tough times that we have, issues like that uh, have a tendency to be seen as less of a priority. But the reality is um, we talk about opportunity. And I think um, that's an area in which we can harness. Um, and it doesn't mean to say that we have to spend an exorbitant amount of money to invest in the sport. It's really to spend, it's well spent money in terms of how we develop and how we educate our young people as to where the real opportunities are to give them the tools that they need to succeed. Sure. Um, when are you going to let us on Jackson? Sorry? <laughs> the rest of our candidates, uh, certainly you know that um, we have a few more candidates to be rolled out and they will be rolled out in due time. As I've said before, we are in a great position. We know who our candidates are, and you'll know when we're ready to release them. Okay, uh, another final question. Another final another question? Final question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you be prepared to um, debate publicly the Premier? I think some time ago we uh, had made an approach uh, concerning a debate, and that certainly has come up on several occasions. Um, on behalf of the One Bermuda Alliance, uh, we've always been ready, all of our candidates, to have any form of debate. In fact, we did it with the uh, age concern. Uh, started out with doing those debates uh, in different uh, constituencies. Uh, so the One Bermuda Alliance is always prepared to sit down and have a discussion with Bermuda and with uh, any representative of the PLP, if they so wish, uh, to talk about the issues of this country. Okay. I'm talking uh, about a one-on-one -on -one debate, and yes, you sir. and the Premier. Okay. That's a yes? Yeah. Listen. As I said already, we've been in discussions already uh, concerning potential debate. We are in discussions as we speak. You know, I, it's funny that you asked the question, Ayo, because Craig and I were talking about that just this morning. But one of the things that we have to realize is this, is that the government has had ample opportunity to um, have open debate and discussion about the direction that they'd like to see Bermuda go. Unfortunately, um, the way in which they operate is not necessarily from a position of transparency and typically it's a reactive position at which we, the OBA, you, the public, have to basically either take it or leave it. Um, and I mean we are always of the position that healthy debate on an issue um, is welcome but that is not necessarily uh, the mode of operandi um, with this particular government which is unfortunate and I have to say that the reality is, is that an election will probably be held within six to seven weeks. And in my opinion, the greatest debate and dialogue can be held with the constituents to really understand what their struggles, pains, frustrations are, to ensure that when and when we become the next government, that we have the sensitivity, the empathy, and, empathy and the understanding to really know how to drive this economy forward and that really matches the expectations of our electorate. And I think far too long, as I said, um, for me, um, what I believe in has been neglected. And um, until uh, there's a change, I honestly believe that it will continue to be neglected. It's time for change. And if you don't become